Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Tennille and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Whitney. I'm Tennille. And today we're taking a look at The Panda's Great Adventure, a movie from 1973, Toei of Japan. A movie that has taken quite a while to get into our hands. Yes, indeed. This is one of those films that was never released to the Americas with any sort of English translation. It was released in a few spots in Europe, and it was also released in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So we were finally able to watch it in Spanish with an English subtitles. Thank you, Michael Ray, for getting this to us. This was quite the back and forth to get this one to work and, and for us to be able to watch it. We had multiple people that tried to send us this film, mm -hmm. mostly because there was a short panda TV short that came out the same year. Yeah, that's like, okay, go panda or something like that. Panda go panda or something. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, I found it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> No, this is still the wrong for wrong one. Yeah, yeah. But hey, we finally got there. Valiant efforts, team. We did mm -hmm. it. <laughs> <laughs> I salute you all. All right, so The Panda's Great Adventure. This is a very run-of-the-mill basic animal fantasy story about growing up and becoming an adult. And it has all the usual tropes that you would expect to go with it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that makes this movie bad? Because I don't think this movie's bad. It's just kind of bland and forgettable. Yeah, for sure. And I think probably this movie's biggest flaws, or biggest flaw, is the the characters just kind of lack life. And that's not because of the animation or anything like that. Like, overall this movie's perfectly serviceable, but... The characters just really kind of... Don't have time to show that they're characters? Yeah, and then the characterization that is there is just kind of like, eh, well, okay, we're doing this, I guess. Like, the the panda kind of starts as, like, a whiny crybaby kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And then you see him growing up. But this movie is, like, just under an hour long. So, like, there really is not a whole lot of time to explore character characterization and yeah. character arcs and anything like that. So it just kind of hits every plot beat and moves on. Yeah. Speaking of plot beats, let's do a plot synopsis. Mm -hmm. So there is a pa panda born to the queen of bears. His name is Lon Lon. All of the bears who are not pandas are like, okay. Where'd this panda come from? <laughs> yeah. He's weak and pathetic, and everybody hates him. And to prove that he is a true prince of the bears, he must climb a waterfall. Mm -hmm. Well, he fails miserably at it. So he is banished from the tribe. Yeah. And his mom still loves him, but has to uphold the rules or some bullshit. It doesn't matter. He He's exiled. And uh, he has a tanuki sent with him to be his trainer or something. Was he sent with him? I thought he just came along because they were friends. Either way, it doesn't matter. I, I think the tanuki decided to follow Lon Lon because he's his friend. Okay. I don't think it was any kind of duty, which right. I think is an important aspect of the movie. <laughs> okay. There's also an evil bear. You can tell he's evil because he's got claw marks on his face and has red eyes. Uh, his name is Demon. Uh-huh. Like English Demon. Uh-huh. And Demon wants to become king of the bears, but in order to do that, he wants to kill Lon Lon. So he sends his own Tanuki lackey to kill Lon Lon. And this Tanuki has cartoon powers. Very bizarre and kind of out there when the rest of this, like, yes, it's still an animal fantasy story where they're all talking and stuff, but, like, otherwise it does not have wacky cartoon magic like this. Mm hmm So he's, he's kind of a, an odd fit. Yeah, he kind of just can, like, has balloons and swims under the water and wears pants and can make part of himself invisible. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of weird 
cartoon powers that don't really do much because he is a bumbling idiot and fails all the time. Mm -hmm. And the other characters don't even really acknowledge his existence most of the time. Lon Lon is captured by humans and sold to a circus. Of course there has to be a circus. It's the 70s. I know. I know. So many circuses in these movies. Mm-hmm. So all the other circus animals laugh at him for being pathetic and bad at everything, including a girl panda. Mm-hmm. And so Lon Lon's like, I'll show you. And then he gets better at circus things. And then the bad Tanuki sets the circus on fire. And Lon Lon saves all the animals from their cages so they don't die. Yeah. And now they like Lon Lon. Yep. Lon Lon has proven himself a man. By accidentally tripping and pushing one crate into the next, into the next, into the next, which frees them all. Yeah. And but then okay. Through this process, they kind of hear about demons' plans. Well, no, 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 not really. No? Okay. No. The evil Tanuki thinks he's burned Lon Lon to death, so he goes back and tells Demon that Lon Lon's dead. So Demon takes over. He just does a coup and takes over the Bear Kingdom. Yeah. In the meantime, Lon Lon takes the now freed circus animals to one of the random places he apparently was wandering before he got captured, where they can live peacefully and he's also going to teach them how to be wild animals. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they're circus an Anyways, doesn't matter. They find the other Tanuki friend from the beginning of the movie who tells them, oh no, Demon has taken over and he's going to execute your mom. So Lon Lon leaves the circus animals and runs back to the bear kingdom to save his mom. And the quickest way to get there is to climb the waterfall that he failed at earlier in the movie. Wow. And he does it this time. Set up and pay off like a champ. Wow. Wow. And then the rest of the circus animals show up, and then they all fight the evil bears. And for some reason, a seal shows up, even though a seal hadn't been a part of the circus animals up to this point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what animals are part of the circus kind of fluctuates depending on what kind of gags they wanted to animate. Yeah. And then Lon Lon has to face off against Demon himself, who knocks him off of the cliff near the waterfall. And then he steps on his paws and says, Long live the king. Wait, no, he doesn't say that part. <laughs> uh, but eventually Lon Lon pushes him off the cliff and he's won and Demon is defeated. I will say this movie does have a number of like, like if you're watching this for the first time, you're like, this is a lot of similarities to Lion King, <laughs> which I mean, just goes to show how many of these animal stories like this have the very similar plot structure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Anyways, Lon Lon has saved the bear kingdom and the circus animals go on their way. And then Lon Lon runs after them and like, hey, I'm coming with you. And they're like, aren't you the prince of the bears? And he's like, yeah, but my mom doesn't. I told my mom I'm leaving. She's like, good luck or whatever. Yeah, I love you, son. Goodbye. Uh -huh. Smooches. So he leaves the bear kingdom after saving them and goes to live with the circus animals in the wild as their own group of random animals. Yep. The end. Yeah. So, yeah, like you were saying... A lot of similarities to The Lion King in various aspects. A lot of similarities to other animal fantasy stories we've seen before. Oh, yeah. But, like, specifically, I, I, I want to say when people are angry that The Lion King rips off Kimba the White Lion. Uh-huh. Which actually has very little to do or any simil very little similarity to The Lion King. Uh-huh. Other than lions. Yeah, lions. And basic animal fantasy tropes that yeah. you'd find in anything. They should be more angry at Disney for ripping off the panda's great adventure. <laughs> this movie that five people have watched. <laughs> <laughs> because this has a lot more similarities with goofy animal hijinks and, like, evil, scarred... Uh, 
bear bear trying to take over the, the, kingdom, the kingdom and doing a coup and sending his lackeys to go kill the prince right and the prince coming back with other animals that aren't involved right. to help fight the evil bad guys uh-huh falling off of cliffs and stuff like obviously all of these things are just basic animal story tropes mhm but it has a lot more similarities to the Lion King than Kimba the White Lion does. Yeah. Anyway, so like we said, this movie is under an hour, so that doesn't give it a whole lot of time to breathe and really endear us to these characters, which is probably its biggest weakness. Mm -hmm. This was done by Toei Animation, and also this year, just to put this movie in context with other Toei films we've watched... Uh, around this time, is Treasure Island. Animal Treasure Island? No, Treasure Island. Treasure Island. Which I I think was a Toei film. I wrote it down because I was like, yeah, that was a Toei film, right? And now I'm not feeling confident. Maybe it was like a, another studio that did it. I don't Dude, know. I do not remember. This was also <sighs> the same year as like Charlotte's Web. Okay. Um, Belladonna of Sadness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this does not stand out. This was released earlier in the year of March 17th, 1973, and directed by Yugo Shiri Shirikawa, uh, who has directed many Toei films, because there's just a lot of Toei films around this time. Mm -hmm. They're just... You know, pumping out two or three a year. Yeah. Which is absurd. Uh-huh. And, yeah, somewhere in the annals of time, this film's kind of gotten buried. It, like, this was a difficult one for us to get our hands on, and there's reason for that. Like, with how short it is and how kind of forgettable it can be, I, I think this movie, yeah, just kind of straight up got kind of forgotten, and that's why it's so hard to get your hands on an mm -hmm. actual copy of it. So... I'm not even going to blame people for not seeing this one. It's not really something that you should try and seek out. Mm -hmm. If you see it, that's cool, but don't feel like you need to. Yeah, like, it's fine, but it's also a pain in the ass to find, and it's not really that remarkable. So I'd give this one a pass. Yeah. Anyway, next time. Next time, join us for another catch-up film. Mm-hmm. From the year 1979, we're jumping forward quite a few years, and we're going to be watching El Pirio Valdez from Cuba. From Cuba? Yeah, I feel like we've watched maybe one other movie from Cuba. I don't think we have. Oh, well, if that's true, I don't know, this will be our first. Huh, wow, that's cool. Okay, Cuba. See you then. <laughs>